Professor Kanye, Professor meaning teacher. I'm calling you the ultimate teacher. <laughs> uh, but now, if if we are gonna if we are gonna be taught, I guess the, one of the things that people use or teachers use uh, to teach, uh, especially doctors like you, uh, would be um, uh, books. Um, can, can you give us some suggestions? You know, this is a thing people are uh, into the they're they're locked in. You know, they want something to do, uh, perhaps or just. You know, lying in hammocks. I'm joking. Now, just give us some 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 situations that that you like us to to, to read. Well, hopefully, uh, we'll, this will be helpful. This is just a random selection of books right off my shelf, uh, no particular order, uh, just random. And so, I would recommend some of these books, and there are many many other books that people can read. But these are some of the books that were very very helpful to me. I always like to begin with the classics. So let me just pull this one up first. Uh, this is one of the books that I read as a teenager. And I was inspired to read this book by Dr. John Henry Clark and by Dr. Yusef Ben Yekinen and many, many others. And it's called The Destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams. And for anybody beginning their studies in African history and African culture, this is a good book to begin with. Uh, Chancellor Williams was one of the uh, teachers of Dr. Clark, as well as J.G. Jackson, whose book I don't have here. J.G. Jackson's book was Introduction to Black Civilization. African Civilization, and it was also one of the early books that I read. I, actually, I read that right after I read this one back in the 1960s. So for anybody getting into it, uh, there are many others, but I always begin with the classics, and so this is one of the books that I began reading back then. Another book that's still very helpful, still, still very timely, is The Miseducation of, of the Negro. Mm -hmm. Uh, this one actually says the education of the Negro, but down here it says the miseducation of the Negro, because there are actually two books by uh, Carter G. Woodson. Uh, this is very, very helpful uh, for anyone who wants to understand what has happened to the mind of African people in terms of what we might call the enculturation of African people, the think, speak, and act in European terms. This book is a very, very interesting book for anyone beginning to study, which will open people's minds to what has happened to us and our sojourn here in the Western world. Mm -hmm. so this is the well, what year was that published? What, about what? I think it was 1923, okay. somewhere in there. Okay. Right. okay. This next book is by a late friend of mine, Dr. Kobe Cambone, who wrote a book called Cultural Misorientation. And basically this book deals with the psychology of what it means to be African in the world today. And it deals with how we've been misoriented to see the world and by and large to see the world through European eyes. Uh, I would recommend that people get this book and a subsequent book of his. Uh, uh, very, very helpful. The subtitle is The Greatest Threat to the Survival of Black Race in the 21st Century. Cultural Misorientation, The Greatest Threat to the Survival of Black Race in the 21st Century. Uh, easy reading. I would recommend that anybody interested in the psychology of what it means to be an African person, especially here in the United States, read this book. Another important book is by my sister, Dr. Marumba Ani, it's called Urugu. Uh, Urugu is what we might say a diagnosis of European cultural behavior. Now, as you can see, this is an extensive book. Uh, it is not necessarily reader friendly. Mm -hmm. However, I still recommend the book. In the future, there probably will be a copy that will be reader friendly, but it is very important in terms of the diagnosis of European cultural behavior. It helps to explain a whole lot of things in terms of why we act the way we do and why they act the way they do. So I would recommend that. Now this. it should be said that she also was a, 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 a student, everybody's a student of Dr. Right. Clark, but a student for real in a college setting and that's more like a, 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 an academic book. Oh yeah, yeah. She was a colleague of Dr. Clark at Hunter College. Mm -hmm. And of course I was a student of Dr. Clark's at Hunter College in the Department of Black and Puerto Rican Studies back in the late 70s, early uh, 80s. Mm -hmm. Next book is by another friend and colleague, the late Dr. Asa Hilliard, The Room Within Us. Oh, All right. right. If you're interested in a variety of topics relating to the experiences of African people in the United States and in the Western world, for that matter, this is another book that you should read. And in fact, I would also say read anything by Asa Hilliard. Mm, 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 mm. And I guess it, I always associate, I don't associate, but when I think of Asa Hilliard, I also think of Amos Wilson. I'm just yeah. saying, you know, just, yeah. just in my own. Well, as I said, these are random books just no, pulled no, no, off, the, not, sho hey, off hey, the shelf. Hey, hey, hey. Amos, you know, we couldn't pull this book. You know, we got so many books that we can't pull every book off the shelf. But I will mention, mention Amos in a moment. Uh, uh, this book here, since you mentioned Dr. John Henry Clark, this book here is called 
John Henry Clark, Master Teacher by Barbara Eleanor Adams. I would recommend mm -hmm. anybody interested in the life and history of Dr. John Henry Clark, who, as you pointed out, was everybody's teacher, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and certainly my teacher. This is a book that you mm -hmm. should read. I can think of no other person that inspired me more than Dr. John Henry Clark. And in fact, the information he, that he gave me was life-changing, life-saving information. Mm -hmm. So without, without Dr. John Henry Clark and Marimba Ani and many, many others, I mm -hmm. wouldn't even be here today. Handsome young man. You, yeah. We need to make posters and T-shirts right. of that one. Hey. And along with this, I recommend that everybody get a chance to, uh, to watch the film A Great Mighty Walk. Oh, the one narrated by, uh, by, by uh, Wesley Snipes. Yes. Yeah, uh, great film. Yeah, yeah. Another important book is a book by Neely Fuller called The United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept, or short, a textbook for victims of white supremacy. If you want an interesting diagnosis of white supremacy or racism in the form of white supremacy, this is the book for you. It's simple reading, uh, it's easy to understand, and it points out some of the more poignant aspects and concept within white supremacy. I recommend that every black person, along with all of the contemporary books that are out now, read this book as a basis for understanding many of the contemporary books. Mm -hmm. Very good. This is the book that Dr. Frances Welsing uh, often talks about when she does her diagnosis of racism. She refers back to Neely Fuller and the concepts that he put forward in the book. He puts forward uh, nine major areas of human activity, we might even add a tenth today, but nine major areas of human activity, and I recommend that people pick up a book in all of those areas and begin to study uh, how racism operates in all of those areas. The areas he points out are eco economics, education, entertainment, law, labor, and politics, war, religion, and sex. And of course, all of these books here deal with different aspects of that. So this is an important book to me. It uh, will expand your horizons in terms of understanding racism in the form of white supremacy. Now, I need to say something about that because I listen to Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. every Tuesday. He's like a, I use it as a text, you like, like scripture. And, and he uses, the, he only uses that book and also he has a book, The Word Guy, that you can get at a, at a, a site, uh, producejustice.com. That goes directly to him, so producejustice.com. He said, but I use it almost like you would use a, a preacher every week. Yeah. You know what I mean? I use the same book, but every time they talk, new new gems, you know, right. facets come out. So, uh, uh, so he's it's he, available. You right. rather he's 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 available. Just uh, uh, YouTube search him, whatever you yeah. do, yeah. for for uh, for Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. Right. Um, and next we have a book by uh, Gerald Horn, The Dawning of the Apocalypse. I don't know what to say about Gerald Horn <laughs> other than just read everything that Gerald Horn puts out. No, if you read everything Gerald Horn puts yeah. out, do you be the next twenty five years? You <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, do your best. Read whatever Gerald Horn puts out. You can be assured that it is something that you need to read. So that's Brother Gerald Horn. But you, you know, I'm sorry, but that also dovetails in, in, into uh, Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. And also, I suppose, yeah. in a way, uh, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, because um, he he actually uh, shows the roots of racism, you know, how yeah. it started, you know, and it's just fascinating. It's, it's a yeah, great exactly. book. I haven't read it yet, but I'm, I'm going to get to that. Though. Well, as I said, just read whatever Gerald Horn puts out. Mm -hmm. Begin reading. I mean, there's always a thing where you, we hear the old adage is that you can hide if you want to hide something from a black person, put it in a book. Mm. So my recommendation for black folks is to read. Pick up a book and read. Even if it's just poetry by a black author, pick up and read and expand from there. Earlier you mentioned uh, Brother Amos Wilson, Dr. Amos Wilson. Mm. I would also recommend that people pick up books by Dr. A Amos Wilson. Uh, two books off the top of my head in particular, but read everything by Asa Wilson. I think the first book, the title is, is the, the, the Developmental Psychology of the Black Child. I would recommend that any black parent that has young children pick up that book by Dr. Amos Wilson. The, the Developmental Psychology of the Black Child, that's a must reading in my opinion. And the next book is Blueprint for Black Power by Dr. Amos Wilson. If you want to have a good diagnosis of where we need to go and how we get there, pick up Blueprint for Black Power. So again, these are just some random selections off the uh, off my shelf. Now you did mention a, a, a poetry a, a second ago, and I'm saying, you know, I'm, I'm a Henry Dumas denizen, right. you know, and just getting his language gets you to other things. But also, if you're going on that tip, I guess uh, right now, Ma Rainey's Black Bond is, 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 is in the news, if you will, but, right. but uh, 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 you know, August Wilson has his century cycle, and I'm going to sit down and read all the plays because plays are actually supposed to be heard, whatever, right. rather than seen. Right. But the reading would be wonderful. What, what about that play? Well, plays, but... plays, poetry, anything like that that will help expand your horizons. 
for the African person, it is necessary and vital that we pick up something and read that will help liberate our, our minds. And so plays by August Wilson can be one step, poetry by Sonia Sanchez or Abi Odun Oye Wule of the Last Poets or any number of other poets can be something that begins the journey uh, or we'll just pick that. up something. Oh, man. Uh, uh, at War, uh, George Edward Tate. Man, I love that poetry. Right. I love that book, you know. Right. And yesterday yeah. was his birthday, I believe, or the day really? before was his birthday. Oh, yeah, it was man. his birthday. Oh, and so, yeah. Blessings. Yeah, and I have, I, in fact, I have that piece of poetry here someplace. I don't know where it's at right now, but At War, I have it here. But again, what's important is that we begin the process of reading mm -hmm. and that we do something. Now, earlier you mentioned uh, something to me about... Um, what would I do to try to talk to somebody who doesn't see, think that it's important to read anything? Mm -hmm. And my response to that is, I don't try. I've learned over the course of time that once I try to introduce a particular subject or a particular idea to someone and their minds are closed and locked, uh, after a certain point in time, I move on. I move on to somebody who can uh, appreciate what you're giving them, whose mind is open to inquiry, to questioning, and who are willing to take it upon themselves to learn something rather than someone whose mind is closed. Asa, Will Asa Hilliard once said something like this, and I'm going to paraphrase it because I don't remember exactly how it goes. He said something to the effect that mental bondage is worse than physical slavery itself. Mm -hmm. That is, the person who is in mental bondage would not only fail to challenge the concepts that hold them in mental bondage, that person will generally fight with their last dying breath to protect those concepts. Mm. So when it comes to that person that we talked about who's not willing to listen, I generally tend to move on. Mm. Okay, well, let us move on. Look, uh, it's, it's the new year, so please, health and 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 just expand uh, you always expand you always evolve i really i, I feel so uh what, what am i saying you know we know me since the childhood so what the heck you know you know what I'm okay you take care Asante man. Sana. Right. Okay. Later.